doing, Charlie? Oh, nothing. But for a minute, I thought you were sitting there dead. <laughs> Eat. I, uh... I bought something for Barbara yesterday. Well, oh, you did? Yeah. Something expensive? Well, uh, yeah. Well, it's about time. Yeah, I think so, too. When are you going to give it to her? Oh, I thought maybe tonight. Look, Steve, do it right. Find a nice romantic spot and let the moon horse around a while. <laughs> then give it to her. Well, I, uh, <laughs> I don't really think all that's necessary, Charlie. Do you want to see it? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Something tells me you're about to get a new mama around here, pal. <laughs> Are you sick or something? No, I'm just fine. Grandma said you would be acting kind of funny because you're in love. Boy, I hope that never happens to me. <laughs> Come on, sweetheart. Well, what do you think, Charlie? <laughs> Full set of ladies' irons, sandwich, and three woods. Golf club. <laughs> yeah. Uh, What's wrong? Don't you think they're too personal? <laughs> too personal? Charlie, uh, what are you trying to say? Eat your cereal. Don't you think I ought to give them to her? Sure, and while you're being personal, how about a nice set of monkey wrenches for her car? <laughs> oh, I'll bet I know what you've been thinking. You've been thinking that I was going to give her an engagement ring, right? Eat your cereal. You think because I've been going out with Barbara all these weeks, it's about time I ask her to marry me, huh? Sure. You know, sometimes I think you're the only one around here that doesn't know you're in love with her. Charlie? Eat your cereal. Hey, look. I uh, thought I'd give her to her sometime this weekend. Son of a gun. And I, uh, I'm going to take your advice, Charlie. I'll wait until the moon is horsing around in the sky before I ask her. Son of a gun. Son of a gun. What if I did that, I would get sent to my room. I'm afraid you would, honey. Then how come you're doing it? Well, because these golf clubs were given to me as a gift, and I want to please the man who gave them to me. Mr. Douglas? Right. I thought we'd have lunch at... Ooh. Babe Ruth couldn't have done better. <laughs> Babe Ruth plays baseball, Mother. I know. <laughs> Does my heart good to see you ruining your sacroiliac because Mr. Douglas wants you to play golf. Well, he doesn't want me to just play golf with him, Mother. He wants me to kind of share the game with him. Oh. Golf clubs are kind of expensive. Uh, he hasn't... No, Mother. How did you know what I was going to say? Because I know you. Uh, are you sure No, he Mother. Now, get back. Back. Over there. Now. The back swing. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Mr. Douglas, that he taught you to wreck the lights? <laughs> well, as long as I kept my head down, I think it would. <laughs> there. 
Yeah, Ernie. Well, if you're busy, I can talk to you later. No, no, I'm just uh, reading the paper. What's on your mind? Well, look, I was just wondering how tall you thought I was going to grow. How tall? Yeah. You can exercise in two ways. For beef, in case you want to play football, or muscle stretching, in case you want to play basketball. Yeah, I suppose that's true. Now, if you think I'm going to grow tall, I'll work on the muscle stretching exercise for college. For college? Yeah. I figured to try for an athletic scholarship so the drain won't be so heavy on you. Well, fine, Archie. Uh, thanks for the thought. I'd say you're uh, already a lot taller than you think. Huh? Well, I guess I'll concentrate on the muscle stretching exercise. Ernie. Oh, yeah, Dad? Do you know where uh, Chip is? I think he's messing around over at Marsha May Gibson's house. Oh, would you go over and get him? <laughs> you mean haul him home? Yeah, yeah. I'll come. Well, just go and get him, will you? I'll, I'll explain later. <laughs> okay. If he asks me why, I'll tell him I'll explain later. After you explain later. <laughs> Charlie, something just occurred to me that I hadn't considered before. Hit me with it. Well, Ernie's been talking about college. Listen, if that kid makes it through high school, it'll be a miracle. Well, that's not the point, Charlie. The thing is, he's thinking of his future in terms of the family the way it is now. So? So if I'm going to take an important step like asking Barbara to marry me, uh, you and the boys and Katie should at least be consulted. I'm going to see if I can get Robbie and Katie over here right now. We going to have a family meeting? Yeah, something like that. Dad? Out here in the kitchen, Chip. Ernie said you wanted me. Yes, that's right. Uh, where's Ernie? He's playing handball over at the playground. At the playground? Well, didn't he understand that I wanted him to come back with you? I guess not. Oh, boy. I haven't been able to get hold of Robbie and Katie. I wonder where they are. I don't know. What's going on, Dad? Well, I'll tell you when the whole family gets together. If I can ever get them together. Now, would you go back to the playground and get Ernie? Oh, sure, Dad. And you come back with him. Okay. Barbara, this is Steve. Say, I'm afraid I'm going to be a little late picking you up for dinner. Yeah, well, uh, I'll get there as soon as I can. Right. Well, I quit playing handball, and I had to trace him to the drugstore where he was reading comic books. You should have told me you wanted me to come back with Chip. Well, I, I just thought you would, Ernie. Uh, you didn't go buy Katie and Robbie's, did you? Well, why should I? Well, uh, Charlie? Yeah? Did you get in touch with Kate and Rob? No, you've been tying up the phone. Well, I'll, uh, I'll try him again. What's going on? Uh, he's not going to tell us till the whole family's together. Did I hear the phone ring a while ago? Yes, it was Steve. He's going to be a little late. Oh? Mother, don't act so mysterious. He's just going to be a little late. Was I being mysterious? Yes. Every time Steve's name is mentioned, you get a faraway look in your eye. That makes two of us. Barbara, what would you do if, and mind you, this is strictly an if, if Stephen asked you to marry him? He hasn't, and he won't. But just suppose he did. Mother, we are going to have dinner at our, at that little Italian restaurant, and then he's going to bring me home early because we both have a heavy work day tomorrow. End of speculation, okay? Okay. Well, there's still no answer. Dad, well, couldn't you maybe tell us whatever it is without Robbie and Katie? Yeah. For some reason, I'm starting to get nervous. Well, we'll wait a few more minutes, but uh, I'd better call Barbara again. Here they are. Hi. Oh, Rob, Kate. Hi. Oh, come on in. I've been calling and calling you. Where have you been? Well, we were over at Katie's folks in Glendale. They're babysitting the boys tonight. Oh, why didn't we think of Glendale? 
Same reason we didn't think of Indianapolis. <laughs> Dad wants to have a talk with all of us. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's right. What is it? You seem worried. No, no, I'm not worried. It, uh... Well, uh, come on and sit down. Hmm? You too, and... I, uh... I wanted to talk to all of you because, uh... Well, as, as you know, we're, uh... We've always been a very close family, uh... What I mean is, uh, we've always been very, uh, close. <laughs> yes. Now, uh, at first, uh, it was just us fellas here in the house, and, uh, well, then Rob married Katie, and she sort of showed us what it's like to have a, a woman in the house. And then, uh, of course, the babies came along, and, uh, I think it even made, uh, our family closer. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> well, what I'm trying to say is that in a family like ours, when one of us is going to do something important, I think he should ask the others how they feel about it. Steve, this is getting to be a filibuster. Say it. <laughs> all right. What would you all say if I told you I was going to ask Barbara Harper to... <laughs> Oh, oh, terrific! Oh, wow. After uh, all these wait, years. Wait, uh, now, there are a couple of things you ought to be aware of. Huh? First, uh, Barbara has a little daughter. A little daughter? Oh, better oh, that way. There are too many men around this house. Oh, right. <laughs> hey, when are you going to ask her? Well, if... Tonight, I guess. Tonight? Tonight. Tonight. Oh, oh, no, 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 everybody, this everybody. Oh, don't forget. If I hadn't been rotten in history, you never would have met her. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Uh, show him, show him the rock. Show him the rock. Oh, yeah, oh, let's yeah, see the yeah. ring. Yeah. I just happen to have it here in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, is that a beauty? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it? That's gorgeous. Yeah. Let's yeah. 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 Let you be in jail. Dad. Uh, there's something nobody's thought of. <laughs> What's that, Ernie? Suppose she says no. <laughs> Chip? Yeah? Um, if you were going to ask somebody to marry you, what would you say? I don't know. Think you'd get down on one knee like they do in the Late Late Show? Ernie, you're making me blow my composition. Okay. I wonder what Dad's gonna say to her. Well, just figure out what you would do in Dad's place. I'd croak. <laughs> it isn't easy to look dignified eating spaghetti. <laughs> no. No, it isn't. Tonight, they do not talk. They eat. But even before they eat, they do not talk. They've been here many times. This is the first time they do not talk. So? To be in love and not to talk, that's a bad sign. Or oh, is it a good sign? Perhaps he's nervous. Perhaps tonight he popped the question. Go play chess. There is something with moonlight. And to really put him in the mood, we pick up the check tonight. <laughs> it's uh, good, but uh, I'm not very hungry tonight. Me either. Are you teaching tomorrow? Mm-hmm. In a grammar school over in the valley, fourth graders. In substitute teaching, you never know what you're going to get. I suppose fourth graders are uh, easier than high school. Yes, they are. Uh, Barbara. <laughs> Hello, Cesare. Very nice. Barbara. Would you like to go for a little drive? 
Well, soon it... As soon as he's finished. Did you arrange for a full moon? I uh, guess I must have done something right. Rob, hmm? do you remember your mother? I just barely. I was pretty little when she died. Chip doesn't remember her at all. Why do you ask? I was just thinking. Barbara must be very special to have broken that barrier. I, I don't think there was a barrier. But I agree about the pretty special part. <laughs> She's sure gonna break down those stories about the ugly old stepmother. Oh, she is? Honey, you have nothing to worry about. I say you're still the prettiest girl in the Douglas family. What Dad says is his business. I wonder if he's asked her yet. Well, that's, that's his business, too. I hope he picks some place romantic. Somewhere they'll remember the rest of their lives. Yeah. Uh, music? Mm. That's better. Oh, Steve. Look at the lights of the city below. Barbara. <laughs> oh, come on, Alice. It's time for bed. It's 11.30. Hey, you remember that new mama I promised you? Well, she ought to be all wrapped and ready for delivery any time now. Come on, tramp. Let's go. Barbara, I've been doing a lot of thinking. Good evening. Uh, good evening. What are you people doing here? Doing? We're not doing it. We were just talking. At midnight on Mulholland Drive. Mulholland Drive? Can I see your license, please? Yes. Sure. <laughs> That's fine. You know, I, I, I'm afraid I don't have it. I, uh, I think what I changed... Uh, closed tonight. I, I forgot to put the wallet in my pocket. You don't have a license, sir? Well, no, I'm afraid I don't. And uh, when we had dinner tonight, the lady who owns the restaurant picked up the tab, so I just didn't realize I didn't have it. How tall are you, sir? Uh, about six foot two. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to get in the police car and come along with me to the precinct station. <laughs> uh, may we ask the charges, officer? Why, yes, ma'am. What is your name, sir? Uh, uh, Douglas. Stephen Douglas. Uh, this is your car? Well, of course it's my car. Officer, you haven't answered the lady's question. Uh, why do I have to go to the police station? You're parked on private property, Mr. Douglas. You do not have the proper identification. Your description fits somebody who's been robbing the houses in this area. <laughs> robbing houses? Do I look like the kind of a fellow? Who... <laughs> Would you come along with me, please? I'll, uh, I'll follow you in this car, Steve. Oh, okay. Mr. Douglas, you have the right to remain silent. To give up the right to remain silent, anything you say can and will be used against you. <laughs> you back again, Floyd? The arresting officer give you your rights? Well, you go along with Officer Gordon, he'll see you get a nice bed for the night. <laughs> Putting you in this position. Shh, it's all right, Steve. No, it's not all right. After all, Douglas. Yes? Uh, oh, Douglas. Parking on Mulholland Drive, no license. A man your age parking on Mulholland Drive? In the first place, I didn't know it was Mulholland Drive. 
And in the second place, even if I did, what's wrong with stopping the car and looking at the lights? Well, those lots belong to somebody, Douglas. And fortunately for you, the man you were supposed to resemble was picked up 20 minutes ago. Well, good. However, you did park on private property and you had no identification. Now, look, Sergeant. A man could only stand so much. All evening, I've been trying to talk to this lady. Now, first in the restaurant, uh... Well, you wouldn't be interested. <laughs> All evening long, I've been trying to find a quiet place to... Here. You see that? It's an engagement ring. All evening long, I've been trying to find a quiet place so I could ask her to marry me. Oh, yes! I said yes! Oh, Steve! The lady says she'll marry you, Douglas. Why don't you give her the ring? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I guess I better. Put it on her finger and kiss her, or I'll book you on a 621A. <laughs> that is beautiful. All right, Douglas, you can take her home. Oh, wait a minute. On second thought, you don't have a license. You can't drive her home. Oh, well, but I have a license. Then you drive him home. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Sergeant. Oh, uh, Sergeant, just what is the 621A? Who knows? <laughs> Barbara, it's so beautiful. I just had a feeling he was going to ask you tonight. Isn't it funny? You know, they say that women are supposed to have an intuition about things like this. And I never had any idea. How did he ask you? What did he say? Well, he was yelling at the police, Sergeant. Yelling at the police? <laughs> Steve doesn't yell. But he was telling the Sergeant a few things. Actually, we shouldn't have been arrested at all. Arrested? <laughs> arrested, huh? Well, not actually arrested, but we did have to go down to the police station. <laughs> Mulholland Drive, huh? Yeah. Boy, you got younger blood than I thought. <laughs> well, anyway, there's rings on her finger. Well, now, that's great. Now, what did she say? Hey, Charlie, I'm a little tired. Uh, could we talk about it in the morning? I'm a little tired, Mother. Could we talk about it in the morning? Of course, dear. Now, you get some sleep. Good night, my darling. Good night. Come on, come on. What are you doing up so late? I was trying to hear what you and Dad were saying. Did he ask her? Yeah, it looks like you finally got yourself a new mama. Huh? Well, Dad asked Mrs. Harper to marry him, and she said, okay. You make it sound like somebody bought a pound a lot. Come on, get the bed, will you? Go on. Good night, Uncle Charlie. Good night. Yeah. Yeah. He went up... When people get older, like Dad and Mrs. Harper, do they get all romantic, like young guys in the movies? I don't think so. I think their cells are beginning to break down. They just get married for companionship. <laughs> That's what I think of. your fault. My fault? They come here many times, no? You play for them many times, no? With bad music, people do not fall in love. Bad music? For 14 years, I played the violin at the La Stalle in Milan. Seven years, I played in the symphony. Okay, if you have played for Toscanini, go play for them something soft, with starlight, with elegance. 
I bring some wine in case your music accomplish nothing. I play no good, eh? Mom, you see what the violin can accomplish? Observe the ring! <gasps> oh, <gee>. <laughs> <laughs> In this booth is going to be a wedding. Of course, you know who we're going to have to invite to the wedding, don't you? Mama Rosini and Cesare. <laughs> I'm not sure that I'll be able to recognize Cesare without his gypsy outfit. <laughs> Have you noticed anything uh, different around here tonight? Why? Your mother hasn't turned off the light. Well, I guess she figures now that we're engaged, we can turn it off ourselves. Yeah. Steve. Hmm? I am... Um, I've been thinking something. Now, now, I don't want you to say anything until I'm through. It's this. Now, I'm going to be moving into a house full of men with my little daughter. And no matter what you might think, that's going to be quite a joke for all of them. Now, Barbara. I'm not through yet. Now, if they want me in their house, I'm flattered. But it's just that I feel I ought to talk to the boys and Charlie separately. So that they... Well, they kind of know more or less what to expect. They know what to expect. Well, not really, Steve. And maybe it's just that I want to make sure that I'm really welcome. Of course you're welcome. Well, let me make sure my own way. Okay. Okay. You don't think I'm being silly about this, do you? I mean, as soon as I know that the boys and Charlie really want Dodie and me in their house, well, then all our problems will be solved. Right. All our problems will be solved. <laughs> I should put it into actual words. Well, you didn't have to, Barb, but uh, we know how you must feel. Hey, Katie, when's their lunch going to be ready? Uh, I'll give it another couple of minutes. You were part of the family the minute Dad started falling in love with you. Don't you know that? I guess I should have known that. Katie felt something of the same way before we got married. Take it easy. Your banquet's on the stove. One night, Uncle Charlie yelled at me. From then on, I knew I was part of the family. Could I... Could you what? Could I hold little Steve? Sure. There you go, Steve. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I got him? Yeah, I got you. Look, if you got anything to say, out with it. Well, I, I, I'm just trying to say that things are going to be a little different around here, and I, I wanted you to realize that fact before the marriage instead of afterward. Mrs. Harper, if you're willing to live in the swamp, that's okay with me. A <laughs> swamp. A swamp. You mean uh, things aren't always as neat around here as you'd like them? Things are never as neat around here as I'd like. I wouldn't mind that. Besides being a substitute teacher, I'll be gone a lot, so your kitchen will be the same as it always was. Mm -hmm. You're right, Mrs. Harper. A swamp. <laughs> well, I, I guess there isn't anything else to say, is there? Oh, yes, there is. I'm tired of calling you Mrs. Harper. From now on, it's Barbara. Charlie. That's the nicest thing anybody ever said to me. <laughs> <laughs> we are 
to do this. Well, Uncle Charlie says he's not changing any sheets and pillowcases in our room for the rest of his life. How come? Because he says we got younger muscles than he does. And a lot of junk about how he doesn't want to get bursitis from wrestling with bed sheets. Uh, Chip, Ernie, uh, I brought uh, Mrs. Harper. Uh, Hi, Miss Harper. Hello. Uh, hey, what's all this? Oh, all of a sudden, Uncle Charlie's muscles got shot down, and we have to change the sheets. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, Barbara wanted to talk to you, but I, uh, well, I guess this isn't the place. Oh, oh, this is just fine, Steve. Oh, okay. Well, I'll leave you. Uh, I have some things I should do in the garage. Oh, would you like to sit down, Mrs. Harper? Well, thank you, Chip. Um, your father and I had a discussion last night. Do you mean a fight? Boy, Ernie. Oh, one of these days, somebody's gonna drop a net over you. <laughs> Go ahead, Mrs. Harper. Well, as you know, we're going to be married soon, and we're all going to be living here together. Well, what I want you to understand is, is that uh, things aren't going to be the same. I mean, they, well, they can't be, can they? Fellas, would you grab the other hand? Uh, sure. What I mean, fellas, is that I'll be bringing in a different set of opinions into your house and, and another set of attitudes. Yes, ma'am. Well, what I'm trying to say is, is that your life, by my very presence, is, uh, is going to be different. Oh, you mean like perfume and stockings hanging in the bathroom and junk? Where'd you learn about stockings hanging in the bathroom? He watches a lot of movies. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead, Mrs. Harper. Well, I, I guess what I mean is is that I want you to have a clear picture of our futures together if Dodie and I move in here. If? I thought it was set, sort of. Well, yes, it is, but... Well, I wanted to be sure, and... Miss Harper, don't say if. Dad will croak if you don't marry him. You will? <laughs> well, sure. The whole house is blowing its mind because Dad's so happy. Well, he says if we don't love you, he'll kill us. <laughs> he didn't say anything like that. He said once she's in the house and we get to know her, we can't help loving her. I think I know what you've been trying to say, Mrs. Harper. <sighs> well, I'm glad because I'm not so sure myself. We'd like very much to have you for our mother. You would. Well, sure. <laughs> you make Dad happy. We don't exactly remember our real mother. And you help with the beds real good. And you're real pretty. Well, here's another thing you're gonna have to get used to. Hey! Yeah? <laughs> Are you satisfied now? Oh, Steve, you wouldn't believe it. From Chip to Ernie to Charlie to Robbie and Katie, well, they were all just wonderful. <laughs> what a family I'm getting into. Tell me, uh, how did Uncle Charlie make you feel welcome? Sometimes he makes me feel like I'm not welcome. <laughs> he called me Barbara. <laughs> Under all that crustiness is a marshmallow heart. Well, I've told you, now I want to go home and tell my mother. <laughs> Nobody has a right to be this happy. I'll pick you up for dinner around 7.30, okay? Okay. Boy, all she can talk about is some guy that has three guitars and a soundproof garage. <laughs> well, Barbara just left. She told me how you all... Uh... Well, anyway, thanks, fellas. What did Dad say? He said, thank you for something. He was thanking us for making Barbara happy. <laughs> kind of makes a guy feel good all over. Come on, get back to work. Go on. Calm down. <laughs> okay. Mother, they were wonderful. They welcomed me so warmly. That's nice, Dick. 
What's the matter? Well, Barbara, maybe you've been talking to the wrong people. The wrong people? Dodie has been in her room all day. She won't eat, and I can't get her to say anything. <sighs> What is it? Whatever it is, I'm sure we can straighten it out. Dodie, look at me. Dorothy Harper, I want you to look at me. I saw that man kiss you. You mean Mr. Douglas? Well, honey, I'm going to marry him. I told you that. He's going to be your new daddy. Sweetheart, when people are going to get married, well, well, they're supposed to kiss each other. Don't you see that? I love Mr. Douglas. But you're my mother. Hello, Mrs. Vincent. Come in, dear. Thank Come you. right in. Sit down, dear. Bob will be with you right away. All right, fine. Uh, I'm helping her get into a new dress. Oh. Uh, anything I can get you? Oh, no, no. Well, this is fine. Thank you. Okay, dear. Silly question, wasn't it? It's Saturday. Uh, how was school yesterday? Why do you kiss Mama all the time? All the time? I saw you. Oh, you did? Well, Dodie, I, I kiss your mother because I love her. And I guess she told you she and I are going to be married. And, uh, after we get married, uh, you and Mama will live in my house. And you'll have two brothers and an uncle and a dog. And I'll be your daddy. This is my daddy. Hi, Steve. Oh, hi, Barbara. Uh, Dodie and I were just having a little talk. Oh, Steve, I'm so sorry. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Oh, Dodie. Steve, I'm now, so please, sorry. Please, don't, I... don't worry about it. It's all right. Her father died when she was less than three years old. Oh, of course, I told her about it. There are pictures of him in the house. I guess she still remembers him, but it, it can't be a very clear memory. But she does remember him, and uh, naturally she resents me. What are we going to do, Steve? Well, I, uh, I don't think it would be right for us to get married as long as she feels the way she does about me. We've got a problem. And I guess the only solution is for me to try to make friends with a little girl who doesn't like me. She's a very warm, loving child, Steve.
Uncle Charlie, did you run out of dried milk again? No, honey, I just found it. You guys ever try going to the market? Well, I don't get paid till next Friday. And besides, this is stuff you borrowed from us. <laughs> Who is Dad? Took that little demon of Barbara's to a movie. Oh, Uncle Charlie, she's not a little demon. She's a very sweet little girl who's just not quite sure what's happening. That'll unlock the door. You can take my word for it. He took her to a movie? Yeah, it's part of the good neighbor policy. Oh, no, it's Saturday. He's taking her to a Saturday matinee. <laughs> You uh, like the picture, Dodie? No, sir. You don't have to call me, sir. That's okay, sir. Will you hold him for a minute, mister? Uh, hold who? He's not supposed to be in here. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. Mommy was busy. Why is she busy these days? Well, to tell you the truth, Dodie, she really wasn't busy. I just wanted to be alone with you so we could get to know each other better. Can we go home now, sir? I can eat this on the way. I think maybe you'd better work on it a little more here. I know. My daddy liked me to eat it all so I wouldn't drop any on the car seat. Yeah, that's right, Dodie. You, uh, take your time. You smell like my daddy. Oh. Did your daddy smoke a pipe, too? I guess so, sir. Your daddy must have been a very nice man. Sir. Yeah, Dodie. I guess you're kind of nice, too. Thank you, Dodie. Can we go home now? Yeah, I think we can go home now. And it's all right if you drop a little on the seat. Oh, just a little, huh? Come on, Come on, Tramp. Come on and sit up. Well, Dodie, I think he's doing the best trick he knows right now. You mean just sitting there? Yeah. Well, of course, he wags his tail, too, but uh, not necessarily when you tell him to. <laughs> Come on, Tramp. Up. Does he know how to follow people, Mr. Douglas? Follow him? Well, why don't you try and see? Come on, Tramp. Come on, boy. Come on, Tramp. Come on, boy. Come on. What do you know? Come on, Dad. Come on. <laughs> I don't believe it. She left the house this morning with such a scowl on her face. Yeah, I know. Okay. Now you tell me. How did you do this? I didn't. Dodie did. What? Oh, I'm not quite sure when it happened. The trip to the zoo was no help, and the Saturday matinee was a shambles. <laughs> but there was a moment in the ice cream parlor. Maybe it's as simple as my eating an ice cream cone with her. Larry used to do that. On Sunday night, it was, um, it was dessert. I remember I uh, finished my cone first, and... Uh, while I was sitting there waiting for her, I, uh, I lit my pipe. Larry smoked a pipe. Isn't that funny? The things the kids remember. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's, uh, that's when she accepted me. 
I don't mean taking Larry's place, but uh, sort of alongside. Well, anyway, it's a beginning, huh? As soon as you're through necking, dinner is ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chad. Dodie, come on down for dinner. I think I almost got him to sit up. Well, good for you. Come on, Tramp, sit up. Tramp, please sit up. Tramp, sit up. Steve, would you mind if yeah, I tried a little experiment? Uh, what experiment? Come on, Tramp. This. Tramp. Hmm. Tramp, I said sit up. Sit up, Tramp. Will Tramp partly be my dog when you marry Mr. Douglas? Well, um, I think so, don't you, Steve? Oh, I'm sure the boys will share Tramp with you if you share Myrtle with them. Hey, me! Hey, look, if somebody don't come in and eat these veal chops, I'm gonna have to eat them all myself, and I'll get indigestion, and it'll be your fault. <laughs> Furniture, huh? No. Well, then you're saying I ought to let Barbara refurnish it. I ain't saying anything. I'm just telling you that with your old furniture, this ain't gonna be a dainty room. Well, now, Charlie, with the wedding only three weeks away, I've either have to let Barbara refurnish it or I refurnish it, right? Two weeks away. Two weeks? Your wedding is two weeks away, Steve. Two weeks. Fourteen days and zap, you're hooked. Anybody home? Yeah, we're up here, Rob. Charlie, it can't be two weeks. There's just too much to do. I got a careless somebody. Oh, I know you're right, Charlie. Hi. Just, oh, hi, Rob. Is Katie with you? We could use her advice. Oh, she went over to Barbara's. She said as long as they're going to be relatives, they might as well get to know each other better. Oh. What's the problem? Well, it's this room, Rob. We uh, don't quite know what to do with it. Oh. Well, uh... Why don't you have an interior decorator come in? Surprise, Barbara. Hey, that's a great idea. That's the solution to the whole thing, huh, Charlie? Right. I just can't believe the wedding's only two weeks away. Two weeks and one day, and zap, you're hooked. <laughs> Charlie, I wish you'd think of a different way of putting it. You know, Dad, you haven't said much about the wedding. Where's it gonna be? Well, you know, we're both a little stunned at the idea of getting married at all, as we haven't gotten down to details it i suggest you get down to details pretty soon but i imagine barbara feels the same way i do about the wedding just a simple ceremony by a justice of the peace down at city hall how many on the list so far uh not many how many mom um 112. <laughs> oh, that's not bad well that's only our side dear i'm sure stephen will want to invite a few people you can help us there katie these invitations should have been out two weeks ago, but things have moved so fast. Haven't you talked this over with Dad? W well, uh, he was working, and I was working, and well, I just assumed he'd want his friends and mine to be there. Well, you know him pretty well, Katie. What do you think? I think he'll want what you want. <sighs> Good. Now, if we can just get this list completed and get these mailed tonight. Tonight? Well, that'll give everybody a full two weeks to get used to the idea that Barbara Harper is going to become Mrs. Stephen Douglas. 
And maybe Barbara Harper can believe it's really happening. <laughs> Yeah, and you shouldn't be bothering Dad when he's getting himself into a mental condition to get married. Sure, but he's the expert. Any questions you want to ask about girls, you ask me. You keep losing all of your girls. <laughs> so the first girl Dad ever found that he wanted to get married to, she said okay. What do you mean I keep losing all my girls? <laughs> well, that Ernestine McLeod that you were all hung up on is going steady with the Marine. And that goofy-looking girl with all those teeth that you thought were so great, she got married. And how about that Amy Carter that told you to get lost because she said you danced like a flamingo? <laughs> and Ernie, who you been talking to? You. Every time one of your romances gets shot down, you tell me about it. That's why I want to talk to Dad about Florine Dixon. Florine, huh? Hey, what's her last name, Ernie? Oh, Dixon. She's the best-looking girl in the whole school. And you feel she's a little beyond your reach, is that it? <laughs> sure. Man, Dan, she could be a movie star or something. That's why I need an expert like you to give me advice. <laughs> an expert like me? Sure. <laughs> the first girl you wanted to get married to said okay. It didn't take you a million years, either. Well, thanks, Ray. We're not by any chance talking about a marriage for you, are we? <laughs> oh, heck no. I just would like to see what it feels like to take out the oiliest curl in the whole school. The oiliest curl? Yeah. Uh, well, Ernie, uh, if this isn't too terribly urgent, could we talk about it later? I mean, uh, I'm late for a dinner date with Barbara. Okay. You got any quick advice you can give me? Well, nothing brilliant. I'll tell you, why don't you talk to Robbie? Okay. Only he's no expert. He went steady about nine times before he met Kate. <laughs> Florine who? Dixon. She's oil. She's what? She's oil. Where have you been, Kate? We kids call a girl oil because she rises to the top. She's smooth. Uh, hey, Ern, uh, if she's so great, why don't you try for something less exalted? Well, I figure that's what all the guys say. When a girl is too good-looking, she scares the guys off, sort of. For all I know, Florine Dixon is real lonesome. Anyway, how did Dad get started going with Mrs. Harper? Well, you ought to know that, Ernie. She was your substitute teacher and called Dad in when you had a few bad grades in history. Yeah, I know that. Only, uh, what did he say to her in those first few minutes? What was his approach? Uh, did he hit her with a few jokes, or...? Did he light his pipe and let her smell the aroma and get all carried away? <laughs> well, I'm afraid you're gonna have to ask him, Ern. You know, Uncle Charlie says the wedding is two weeks away. Dad couldn't believe it. Neither could Barbara. She's afraid her friends are gonna hate her because she's sending out her invitations so late. Well, I don't see why her friend... Invitations? <laughs> uh, she's mailing hers out first, and then she'll check with Dad tomorrow on the friends he wants to invite. Katie, Dad thinks they're going to be married at the City Hall. Well, Barbara thinks they're going to be married... Rob, why didn't they talk about it? Who are you calling? Barbara's mother. She's planning to mail out the invitations tonight. Hello? This is Katie Douglas. Have you mailed the invitations yet? Not yet. Have you ever licked 112 envelopes? <laughs> what? No. She and Stephen have gone out to dinner. Probably Mama's lasagna palace. In all the years you were alone, did the idea of a second marriage ever occur to you? No. Oh, a couple of times, maybe, but uh, nothing major. Nothing that actually made me want to stand in front of a justice of the peace and say, I do. <laughs> I'm very flattered, sir. Justice of the peace. Well, it's the second marriage for both of us, and I thought to... What's wrong, Barbara? <laughs> Steve, I just don't know how to tell you this. You tell me what? Something is wrong. No smiles, no holding hands. Something is wrong. 
Go play something quick. Look, darling. If you want a big wedding, there's no reason in the world why you shouldn't have it. And just be... Not right now, please, Miss Ray. Mrs. Harper and I are talking. But, but I don't want a big wedding, honey. I mean, well, for the life of me, I can't figure out how I just let this happen without talking to you about it. But you're talking to me about it now. And just because I, I pictured a justice of the peace at City Hall doesn't mean it has to be that way. But that's what you want. Uh, the invitations. And he just said to go away? We are talking, he said. And he called her Mrs. Harper. Maybe you played the wrong song. <laughs> Mamma mia, she's leaving. Uh, may I use your phone? Oh, of course. Mother, Barbara, did you mail the wedding invitations? Katie called? Oh, good. We almost made a terrible mistake. No, we may never mail them. I've been waiting all day for an interior decorator dame. I had to go to the store. If she gets here, show her Steve's room and take the note off the front door. Charlie. Oh, I, I was just taking the note off the door that said for you to wait. I should wait? Well, I'm here now, so it's okay. The room's upstairs. Mr. Douglas is up there. Well, you're supposed to go ahead anyway. Right this way. Where do we go? I guess the idea is for you to come up with some ideas for fixing it up. You going to make this into a restaurant? Huh? I'm Mama Rossini from the Lasagna Palace. Mama, I guess I blew the deal. I thought you were the interior decorator. Oh, my no. I, I come to tell your papa that he must never give up love, that he must to marry with the lovely signora. Well, he is going to marry her, isn't he? I talk too much. What time he comes home, your father? What makes you think he isn't going to marry Mrs. Harper? You can tell me. I'm his son. Yes, I see you have the same fine eye, but you see, there's a saying in my village, the tongue can cut deeper than the sword. I go now. I come back when your papa comes home. Uncle Charlie, this lady said... Uh -huh. uh, Aren't you the lady from the restaurant? Si, signore. Arrivederci, bambino. <laughs> what did she do, bring you a sandwich or something? She said she had to see Dad because she thinks he isn't going to marry Mrs. Harper. What kind of talk is that? Well, she seemed awfully sure. Has anything gone wrong that you know about? You talk like you got a paper head. That marriage is as solid as a rock at Gibraltar. Hi. Hello. I'm Marcia Cummings. And? I'm the interior decorator. Oh, well, uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, it's barely possible that we won't have to change the room after all. We'll call you. And thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Goodbye. Are you sure it was Mama Rossini? It was her. Well, what did she say? Well, she's got an accent and everything. But I think she was trying to tell me you weren't going to marry Mrs. Harper. Well, where would she get an idea like that? And why would she come over here? You sure there ain't something you ain't telling us? Like you blew the marriage or something? <laughs> of course not, Charlie. That's probably her. She said she was coming back. She did. 
You want me to let her in? No, I'll, I'll go. I'll throw your dinner in the oven. Okay. Dad didn't blow the marriage. I'm trying to pattern everything I do with Florine after what he did with Mrs. Harper. How's it going? Rotten. I think not being old enough to smoke a pipe is slowing me down a lot. Well, uh, come in and sit down, Mrs. Rossini. Grazie. How is uh, Cesare? Oh, he's fine. Mr. Douglas, do you think this is budding in of me? Oh, no, no. If you like, I won't say one word about you and the Signora. What about me and the Signora? You must not permit the lovely Signora to send back all the invitations to your wedding. Oh, but she's sending them back for a reason. All women do things for a reason. But as the years go past, they find out that reason is no good. Capish? Well, yes, I understand what you're saying. But oh, please, let me tell you a story. In my village, there was a young girl, pretty, full of life and fire. And one day, a soldier came to our village, and this girl, oh, she fall in love. You know, of course, this girl is me. I... I thought it might be. There were many kisses with this soldier. He was so handsome. He make a girl's hands to was fire just to look at him. Then one day, he said to me, he wished me to marry with him. His name was Stefano. How do you say that in English? Well, I imagined it's uh, Stephen. Uh, that's my name. I knew you sent me here for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Stefano, may I call you this? Oh, yeah, of course. Now, Stefano, the one in Italy, he must go back to a war someplace, and he said to me, please, to marry with him. You know what I say? Stupid Omeo, I say, you go to war, and then you come back, and then I marry with you. Oh, what a fool, what a donkey. It is Piaccio. I mean, I'm sorry, but... Well, I suppose you know what happened. He, uh, he was killed? No, he married somebody in Rome and have 12 kids. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry. Stefano, I, I never marry. Cesare, he's my brother. We come to this country, but never, never do I find a man such like my soldier. Never. This is why I permit myself to budding in. This is why I am here. You must not let your lovely senorina go. If she has the brains of a donkey and the voice of a trumpet, don't let her go. Because... Out of her eyes comes love for you. Oh, nothing is more important than this, Stefan, or nothing. But I'm going to marry her. What is this you say, Stefano? We're going to be married. Oh, grazie. You send me here, he listens, and now they will marry. Oh. <laughs> oh. Be happy, Stefano, be happy. <laughs> oh, and please, you give your love to my... to that lovely lady of yours. But never, never tell her that I'm the one who saved the marriage. This will be our secret together. It'll be our secret. <laughs> Grazie, Stefano. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> You guys, get away from that door. What do you want to do, grow up and be a couple of snoops? <laughs> Is Dad just going to let that lady think she passed up the marriage? Why not? Well, sometimes it's kinder to let somebody think something than to clobber them with something that doesn't make any difference anyway. Look who's suddenly become a philosopher. <laughs> Charlie, don't hold dinner for me. I'm going out. Don't hold dinner. 
Don't hold in it. Mother, I couldn't possibly eat a thing. How is it you're not seeing Steve tonight? Because we decided to give ourselves some time to do some private thinking. Very sensible and very dumb. And tomorrow he works and I work too. Oh, sure, sure. Barbara Hopper, you will eat something or I will force feed you as I did when you were two. Here. Now, number one. Your big wedding is already practically out the window because there's no longer any decent time to send out the invitations. Number two, you stay there and eat. Hello, Stephen. Hello, Miss Vincent. Steve. Hi, Barbara. I didn't think I'd see you tonight. Well, uh, something happened today and, uh, well, I want to talk to you. Um, I just this minute thought of something that'll keep me in the kitchen for hours. Well, come on, sit down. Now, what do you want to talk about? Well, I need is something to go wrong. Then I can let Florian think it's okay. Like what? No, I don't know. But most of the junk Dad does is right. Man, Ernie. Why don't you just go up and ask her to go out instead of all this horsing around with what Dad does? Because you just don't walk up to a goddess and ask her to go out. <laughs> Besides, she won't talk to me. I will. Eat your dinner. <laughs> But it's not what I want, honey. As Mother said, it's too late to decently send out invitations. And besides, I never wanted a big wedding anyway. But you must have, Barbara. Otherwise, you wouldn't have assumed that the... What I'm trying to say is that Mama Rossini is right. It's the wedding itself that's important. Would we be any less married if we were married by a justice of the peace? Well, of course not, but... Well, if you two will excuse me, I'm going to bed. Mrs. Vincent, what do you think? Hmm? About the wedding arrangements, I mean. Okay. You finally asked me. I think you're both so busy trying to please each other that you're completely forgetting there might be a compromise. Like what? Halfway between what each of you wants. A private wedding with just the family present in a little chapel. Well, I've said it. Good night. Mrs. Vincent. You are a very smart woman. Yeah. They say wisdom comes with age. I'd rather be a little bit younger and a little more stupid. Good night. Well. Settled? Settled. Are you hungry? I'm starved. Come on, I'll fix you some. to the show, so we'll be back in a couple of hours. Oh, sure, like 12 o'clock. Well, I'll check up on the boys once in a while, uh, whether or not they yell. <laughs> I think Chip knows that, honey. Hey, where's Ernie tonight? He said he was going to sit for us. He got a date with that girl. Florine Dixon. Dixon. <laughs> yeah. I saw her at school, and she really is something. I don't know why she even looked at a squirt like Ernie. Oh, I do. Oh, he finally figured out what Dad does. <laughs> See you later, Chip. Have Bye. a good time. Yeah. Hello, Mama. Oh, Senor, good evening. Hello, Mama Rosini. I have for you your special table. Why? <laughs> Everything is bene, Yeah, uh, Very bene, thank you. <laughs> There is a saying in my village, the goat on the hillside is not happy unless there is at least one avalanche. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, I'm not quite sure, but uh, I'll tell you, the next goat I run into, I'll ask. <laughs> what is it, Steve? Good evening, senor, senorina. Table for two. Oh, this way, Petriocelli. Oh, hi, dear. Well, uh, hello, Ernie. Oh, this is Florian Dixon, Mrs. Harper, my dad, Florian. Hi. Hello, Florian. Oh, we're having dinner and maybe taking a show. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's fine, Ernie. 
Florine says it's kicks to ride buses. Oh. Well, uh, won't you join us? Uh... It's up to Ernie. <laughs> well, if you don't mind, Dad, uh, we'll eat alone. Florine wouldn't talk to me for so long. We got a lot of junk to catch up on. <laughs> we'll see you later. Thanks, anyway. Yes. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 She won. All I did was ask her if she liked Italian food. And she said, yeah. <laughs> you know, she is a very pretty little girl. Uh, no, no, I wouldn't say that. She isn't? No, I say she's oil. <laughs> Cesare. That uh, young couple over there, would you play something nice for them? See, si, Mr. Douglas. 